this week on Socratic Cinema. I am infinitely more invested in this than I've ever been in team sports. Like, this is my yeah. Super Bowl, right? <laughs> like, I, I, Guys, like, mm, they yeah. have a Where Are the Kids Now? <gasps> oh, oh my Where's the God. cheese kid? <laughs> okay. At least Fair. things are like more compact, if, if very much more dangerous. I will get shot if I walk alone yeah. in that shape, so I gotta what? be careful. <laughs> that is, that is, <laughs> that is true. All right, listen, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it straight. I'm gonna give you the essentials, all right? Toddlers, yeah? Yep, yep. yep. Japan, check. yeah? Ooh. Check. Mm -hmm. Mid-2000s. Triple Love check. It. Reality TV. Yes, yes. sir. Yes. I, I I call it old enough. Wow. Wow. Big, big. Everyone. Genius. Thank you for tuning in today. It's another episode of the Socratic Cinema Podcast. We're here today to talk about the the hit sensation that swept the nation uh, like 10 years ago. We're talking about old enough. The, the, yeah. Yeah. Woo. woo. My name is James Delisio. I'm Casey Clark. And I'm Charlie Heatherly. And that was smooth, James. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, old enough. Uh, Japanese reality show from like 2008 made its way to Netflix. I'm not exactly sure when, uh, but I don't recently. feel like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah recently. Uh, and it's, it's essentially, the premise is simple, right? This is a, a first for us. We don't normally talk about, well, we don't normally talk about TV shows, let alone like non, you know, limited series with that are very plot heavy like this is the first time we've talked about i think Clara. ah you caught me this is the second time <laughs> we've talked about like a reality episodic show um the premise of old enough is simple you get little kids you get these little toddlers ages like i haven't seen any older than four in the episodes i've seen um two to four seems to be the the prime range uh, there's one that was six okay maybe i haven't seen that one or, or maybe i just hey. forgot um but the premise is you get these little kids and you have them run errands on their own. Go to the grocery store, pick up the food for dinner, take these to the laundromat, you know. And, and you have this camera crew following them around the whole time. And you just see how they do. See how the little guys, the little guys do. Um, mm -hmm. And we selected this this week because uh, we're tired. And last week was a bit of a crunch for us. And so we wanted something nice and light to unwind with um especially as we gear up for our our season finale coming in just a couple weeks here ooh, ooh, big, ooh, ooh, oh, 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 big things God. coming gotta watch so here we are talking about a japanese reality show about toddlers from 2008 uh who would have thought right not me um <laughs> not me i'm gonna pass <laughs> it over i'm wondering like is is it is it worth offering uh first impressions or, or or should we open it up with a different question like how about how about what is your favorite uh like give a brief description of your favorite task that you've seen so far oh i got um, one instantly ooh. yeah i definitely know what my favorite is uh i'm hoping there's no dupesies um casey i'm gonna pass it to you first if you yeah. have one. if not if not we can go to if if you don't have one ready we can go to Charlie. If, if, oh no, no, I oh. have one ready. Oh, you're locked. Oh, Casey, go. I have one ready. All right. I'm going to start off with the first episode. All right, Ooh. first episode, the grocery store A. Uh, this kid was on top of it. Not only did he walk with his little flag all the way to the grocery store. I love the flag. The flag. Oh my gosh, I was getting I was, it just brings me so much joy. Charlie and I actually highlighted that all of us have worked with kids as like a job in one way or another. At, and I just, That's I right, just yeah. love it. I just love it. I mean, I, I love Dang. kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and just seeing them be so, so capable the way that he almost, he almost forgot that curry. But he didn't. But he did it. <laughs> he but, he did it. It. <laughs> but he did it. He said, "No, wait a minute." And even though he dr he drug drug yeah, come up with the past tense. flowers <laughs> drug those flowers. <laughs> he drugged them. The, drug. He drugged them. <laughs> Scrumped. What was the word? Scrumped. 
Yeah, Jesus the scream Christ. I just scrumped. Come on, guys. <laughs> but yes, I would say that would be the favorite because oh, he's he a just strong choice. He, he's a str- he did he did what needed to be done, and he did it with class, with memory. All right, right. He no allowed drama. Himself, yeah. No drama. No drama. He he allowed himself to be helped. You know. Mm, he went straight into it, yep. and then he was like, "You know what? Maybe let's reevaluate." He showed he showed everything, everything. <laughs> no crumbs, <laughs> would you say? He ate no crumbs. Mm. Yes, <laughs> I, I I could not agree more. That's such a beautiful choice. Charlie, thank you, thank Charlie, you. Charlie, what are you thinking? Uh, okay, I watched eight episodes. Okay, I, I think got, I, I only watched seven. Okay, so, you okay, so so I watched the most. Uh, ha 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 ha. Uh-huh. And my favorite episode <laughs> is episode eight. Let me oh. set the scene for Ooh. you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Prepare for some bad Japanese pronunciations, by the way. Here I'm we sorry. Go. Here we go. I'm so- I try my hardest. It's my Californian accent. I can't do anything about it. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me set the scene. We are in the town of Hakodate, right? Correct. Okay. Correctly yeah. pronounced. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very <laughs> hilly, and this guy lives on the top of the hill, right? His dad is a fisherman either for his job or for, uh, like, just a hobby. And he says, okay, our kid's going on this show, right? I want to give our, like, basically nearly three-year-old a challenge. So he goes out the night before the show tapes, and he catches three fish that are, like, actually large. Like, probably each of them is is only five pounds, but for a little three-year-old kid, like, that's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he catches these three fish. Uh, and he says to the kid, uh, I'm going to put these in an ice box. I want you to walk down the hill to the fishmongers, get sashimi, come back up with a couple of groceries uh, and the sashimi. The kid goes, okie dokie. Uh, as he's walking down the hill, he's holding this little ice box with the cord. Right? I've seen this clip. Oh, yeah. The cord snaps. It's not even his fault. The cord snaps and the fish roll down the hill, right? They, uh, they, 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 they slide down. It's a little wow. slippery. Oh, I can the hear next, it. Like hour, this kid only cries like one time when his mom shows up, like through the window. Like for some reason, his mom has direct view of the bridge that he, he's walking down. Mm-hmm. But this kid, for an hour, tries his darndest to pick up these heavy fish that are slippery with his little hands. And he can't do it. He doesn't know how to do it. But eventually, he grabs them by the tail. These two fish pulls him in for the last one, the heaviest one. He can't get it, so he gets two snicks two sticks literally snaps them in half with his knee like breaks them gets the two like skewers the fish in the mouth and lifts it into the bucket right what? he wow. can't retie it he can't retie the Work. knot he doesn't know how to he finds a random guy to retie it for him everything's great Work. he's going good continues to walk down the hill guess what happens it, it snaps, snaps again. <laughs> oh my gosh no. this, time, this kid has had some experience right within a minute this kid picks up the fish the correct way from the middle right and he puts them all into the bag instantly incredibly good he doesn't want to wow. deal with the cord again he's learned his lesson so he picks up the box from the handles and holds it right next to his face right super smelly uh, oh. He goes down wow. to the sashimi place, gets the sashimi. Then he gets apples and milk. This is important. These two apples he has in a grocery bag. This kid also gets a soda. He gets two sodas, one for his mom uh, that we find out later. So he's super nice. He, she, she didn't ask for that. He oh. also gets a bunch Aww. of mandarins. He's carrying more weight than they anticipated him to. It is like four grocery bags of stuff right on this little three-year-old boy so as he's walking back up the hill he literally cannot take the weight anymore so he puts the grocery bags down as he does this the apples spill out of the bag all the way back down the hill Uh, this kid runs down the hill grabs the apples walks back up as he's putting them in the bag again they fall out again a man in a random car has to come and help him pick up the apples put them in the bag he goes back up the hill this kid did it with an extra present with extra mandarins he showed resilience oh all right oh, wow. I, this was a journey i want someone to make a, like a comic strip it, out of this i'm I sorry would've... that it took so long but this was an epic journey that no, i need you all to go on with like it. It. listen guy like me the second time the fish fell out of that box i would have given i would have said all right we're done. yeah this kid's <laughs> awesome <laughs> Wow. And, and th- that's what's so cool about this show to me is that like you can actually see these kids get way less frustrated than adults would if this happened to them. If if it snapped one time, I'd be like, what the heck? Like, really? Now the fish yeah, are like, dirty. My day's ruined. Yeah, yeah my day's yeah. ruined. Dropped keys at door, day ruined. Now, yeah. now fish? 
I'll, yeah. Fish freaking twice. Not once, but twice. Apples twice. Like this yeah, poor no, kid that's... exerted himself. So I, I I forgot his name, but but he he did a great job. Props Damn. to him. Yeah. Wow. I gosh, that is incredible. That's truly. I cannot wait to watch that next episode. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this season. Like there's no doubt about it. This is absolutely. A, this has been the highlight of my weekend between like work mm -hmm. and stuff. But my favorite episode is episode five because episode five has a little something unique in it, right? All of these episodes are normally about one kid. Episode five gives yeah. you not one, but two little troopers. And not mm -hmm. only do you have two kids, but their boyfriend and girlfriend, their little four-year-old <laughs> dating. Yes. Yes. It's so cute. It's so cute. And they like, they have to walk up this giant 220, like massive stone steps to the top. And the whole way, they're being all cute and they're holding hands and I'm tired and blah, blah, blah. And they get to the top and they get some sweet little candy as a treat. The little, the, the sweet shop owner gives it to them on the house. The boy buys a little balloon. It's, it's a oh, chess kiss. These two kids, the way they support each other, the way they help each other out when they need it, the way the girl has to constantly keep the little kid in step doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah. I'm living for it. I, I just, I am filled with joy when I watch this show. And, and yeah. me, just seeing, like, like, it's so simple. It's so simple, right? What's better than one of these kids? Two. It's, it's just like, yes, this, <laughs> it's math. It works. And it's, oh, ugh, yes. Old enough. I cannot, I cannot recommend old enough enough. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was poetic. Great. Um, you know what sticks out to me immediately? Um, is the way that that of the eight episodes or seven episodes I saw, there was only one wherein the kid uh, was like, like not an MVP. Uh, oh yes, yeah. yeah which yeah. one? Uh, episode two. The, yep, episode the, two. The that little juice, kid, juice monger. Oh, yeah. yeah, the, the juice, juice kid. Mon <laughs> juice kid. Oh my god. Yeah, he did not understand the assignment, but it's okay. I mean, listen, it was still entertaining. He's it was kid. still cute. He's yeah. He's kid. also. How, however, I would like to point out that episode one kid is two years old. Episode two, twice his age, literally, mm -hmm. and could not keep it straight, man. Uh, but I like that was the only episode with a dog in it, so it kind of <laughs> it, it, it wins. It, it's okay for me. Um, I, I love how we're rating children on their ability yeah, to perform. Yeah, honestly, no, I, I love episode two kid. I think that he's got his priorities straight. Playing with dogs in the Japanese sun. Sounds awesome and <laughs> idyllic to me, and that's what me or that's what uh what uh Miyamoto would do. He would just go on little adventures. <laughs> Are we talking about Nintendo lore now? I'm talking about yeah, my my favorite game designer, Shigeru Miyamoto. That's what he would do. He would go out and explore Space. caves and forests and things. Yeah, that's how he came up with uh, Zelda. Yeah, um, but but I I wanted to say I love how much like uh these kids defy expectations, right? Like they're surprisingly, aside from Juice Kid, uh, they're <laughs> all love to Juice Kid. Um, but they're really like, like shockingly, uh, like good at problem solving. It's so much fun to watch them like figure it out. And, and you really just, you really root for them, you know? Uh, like this, this, listen, I am infinitely more invested than this than I've ever been in team sports. Like this is my yep. Super Bowl, right? Like I, I cuz you you just you want to see him win so bad and like I think really the epitome of that to me is in um I think it might have been episode 7 where the girl like did the original task that was set out for her and then she got like an optional bonus task to pick up something from a watch shop uh and like on she couldn't find the watch shop so she went back to her mom um and the girl started bawling because she like like failed the optional extra mission and it's like you already did everything that was asked of you and then <laughs> mm -hmm. right mid sobbing she's like no i'm gonna like make it right i'm gonna go yes. out and i'm gonna find the watch shop and i'm gonna finish what i started and i just yeah where is this resilience in in our modern society we we mm -hmm. used to be we a, used to be a proper country <laughs> it's not even our <laughs> it's not even our country no but I, I just like just wow like so so pure and i don't mean a lot james of, like, completely cut out there no, for you yeah oh that, what, did I, that, what do you, you mean on, james? i don't mean blank yeah. oh yeah, yeah yeah i don't mean to um i i think 
you see, I cut out because I needed to figure out how to phrase it. Um, mm. A lot of times with uh, foreign reality shows, right? I feel like there's a temptation to sort of um, idealize like foreign countries and that kind of thing. Um, you see that a lot with like, like you know, you know, like weeaboos and stuff, right? Uh, and I think it's important to note that that like to not do that, right? Like I'm not saying like oh the Japanese kids are just naturally better than the American. Like that's that's weird, <laughs> you know. It's a weird thing to say. Yeah. But like, like this show, I mean, I'm sure it's all it'll also be different nowadays. But like, you can't do this in like Los Angeles. <laughs> I oh, would no. To be fair, like the the places where they are getting these they're children suburbs. to perform tasks, yeah, they're suburbs, right? Like relatively right. to something like Los Angeles, you do not let a two year old child out on the streets of Los Angeles. Are you kidding me? Right? Like, yeah, like no. the kid will die. You know, and, and, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, San Bernardino. <laughs> San Bernardino. Let's go to Myrtle. M Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> Take a walk to okay. okay, okay, don't dox this man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. this to uh to you like cut that out, right? these kids go to stuff in uh in like Tokyo, right? Right. Like, they don't yeah. They, they're not gonna leave them out in Tokyo. And, and of course, like they have a full camera crew with them that like it, it's showing yes, that like yeah. they will like the camera crew is not they're not like totally stoic. Like they get involved sometimes, um, which I would listen. I would kill to be a camera operator on this. I love how they have the cameras disguised <laughs> in like little buckets so the kids yeah. don't like stare at them. It's oh, so yeah. neat. And, yeah, and just and the narrator too is so funny. I love it. I love everything about this. Um, the little theme song. I love how how just jubilant it is. Right, like when, whenever yeah. the kids set out on their mission and it does the little and then yeah. I'm into it I'm ready and I'm on a little journey with them um, this is and, and I love how short the episodes are yep you can like it's totally bingeable you yep. can pop, pop one in right this ain't no Stranger Things season 4 where every episode's confirmed to be over an hour All long right. All right. Right. Oh. Sir, <laughs> sir those are movies um, <laughs> those are movies seven, ep seven minutes then maybe they get a little runtime bump a few episodes into like 15 and, and they don't need to be a second longer or shorter like it's 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 the yeah. perfect length. I, I'm. They just, use I'm, the time allotted really, really well. They honestly mm -hmm. do. Like, and they craft. Like, speaking more to the the crew and the editing, like they craft really like good narrative arcs for these episodes, right? Like, oh yeah, that's, that's the struggle <laughs> with um with like uh documentary or reality style filmmaking is that like you just you just um, aggregate like so much footage, and then the hard part is where's the story in this, like. I have to find mm. a story in like a yeah. hundred hours of just real footage. Um, and they do it flawlessly. Well, <laughs> I noticed something actually. Oh, I noticed mm, something in, notice? in episode two. Do you know how, how the kid's supposed to be making the juice, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that when he is playing, because like the arc of the episode is essentially he gets into the room, he plays around, then he makes the juice, then he goes back, right? And there's like a couple little things in the middle. In the very beginning, you can look at the container and you can see that there's a little bit of juice in there. I saw that. But but they pretend that like he only juiced after. So yeah, it's possible a, yeah. that he did something and then stopped or they just rearranged the steps so that it looked like he messed around more than he did. I'm sure they did. And I'm sure that probably happened wow. like a lot because that's made yeah, him the mean, villain of the season. Well, that's that's listen, like I said, the story is made in post like they uh, <laughs> they splice it around. They splice. Yeah, no, true. It's it, gotta, it, it, it's gotta be it's TV. about finding the narrative. Yep, it's got about mm -hmm. it's gotta have a story no matter what. Um, I am I'm sad that there's only 20 episodes of this show. As far as I can tell, like there's not a season two on Netflix that I saw. Um, not on Netflix, but I'm pretty. I'm like, sure it exists. Don't quote me on this. This is probably not true. But from my <laughs> understanding, this is a segment of a bigger show. And oh. they have like hundreds of these. Like, there's tons of of old enoughs, uh, but only a couple of them have been released on Netflix. So you could probably find some other ones somewhere. Uh, yeah, I feel like yeah. I'd like that. You know, I just it's 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 pure. It's pure, right? Guys, like, mm -hmm. 
They yeah. have a where the kids now. <gasps> oh, oh my Where's the God. juice kid? Okay. So juice after kid? you you watch you watch these episodes and then you listen to our podcast, you Netflix has a article on where the kids are. And everyone should just go, they should just go and read it. They should just go and read it. I'm going to drop Mm -hmm. it in our Discord right now. Uh, But yes, please. Yeah, we'll link that in the description of the episode maybe or something. Yeah, I I would Yeah, so everyone can can enjoy it. (laughs) I was just looking up uh, what Charlie was saying to see if it was, like, if I could confirm or deny it. And this gem, this utter gem popped up, so... Wow. There we go, guys. <laughs> yeah, the show's been running for 30 years. Holy. Really? Holy, dude. Mm-hmm. It's, wow. uh, it's really cool. Yeah, like, in this guy's response to, to like, how has the show remained so popular for 30 years, he basically says, like, it's, it's main thing is that it's documenting what Japan is like. Right. So it, it, it's less a long running program where they see these as like small narrative arcs and they see it more as documentaries on, yeah, yeah. on like the state of Japanese society, which is really cool. Actually, I, I think it's a, a really fun thing for a country to have a look at how children like will will act in there. Like I would actually they're... love to have an old enough for for America. I think that'd be super fun. I think it, the differences would be on the immediate family. Yeah. Uh, like like American reality TV and uh other countries sure. we're talking about how like um like there's no equivalent to old enough in american reality tv you know like there's nothing so yeah. wholesome um because you look at american reality tv we got like jubilee youtube videos where they're like ranking seven strangers in their underwear gone Find wrong the right? Hidden republican right right <laughs> it's like and then you have on you look on netflix and we've got love is blind and yeah i don't all the other yeah, the all ultimatum the other sick freak shows that i don't watch God, like awful. this is a messed up this is <laughs> terrible and then you look at japan and it's like let's have let's talk about how capable children are and like watch them do wholesome local errands <laughs> What okay. has gone? We've lost the plot. Well, well. So here's the thing. I, I think it's definitely indicative of each country's cultural values because it's actually really interesting to compare American reality shows with British reality shows, and very specifically, like game shows. So you'll see in America, every game show, like look at Survivor, look at Jeopardy, look at Wheel of Fortune, has a monetary aspect to it. You are playing to win, and these yeah. are like real normal people who are trying to get money. Isn't, in, that, isn't that insane? Isn't yeah, that it's, sick in the head? It's pretty wild, but in British shows, uh, a lot of panel shows specifically are career comedians just doing stupid stuff and laughing about it. And I greatly prefer panel shows, except for Survivor. Survivor's an incredible show. It's one of the best game shows ever designed. Uh, but like it it definitely shows how you know i would say america is probably a very competitive place compared to to other nations right shocking observation (laughs) yeah wow hot take from charlie we like competition (laughs) but uh but speaking of competition i actually have a a question for you guys all right Mm. and i want Mm -hmm. i want good answers here uh maybe it's the american in me but as i was watching uh this show i was thinking if i had to like sentence these children to a battle royale what? which child would i choose to be the victor or would i bet my money on to be the victor right well like in combat yeah no holds bars combat? Um, I, I declined to answer uh if it was a battle royale no, i got of- an answer <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no killing james that's ridiculous i'm going Actually, for knockouts okay no, no, I, it's like I, mma I, rules I would pick the girl who like went to the fish market and bought the sea bream because oh. she because she has an eye for like dismembered living organisms. <laughs> um, um so, so, <laughs> wow, that was <laughs> well, you, why, listen, a serious. It's weird of you to bring that up, James. It's, shut up! No, it's not. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. No, I'm kidding. Okay, cool answer, Casey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, mine would be the kid from episode eight. All right, he's gonna oh, ride it till the wheels fall off. I, I yeah. do think Juice Kid would be a, a force to reckon Juice with. Juice Kid. Just the True. utter chaos. He would yeah. be the wild card. And he He'd has just a start com- biting ears off. He'd go yeah. full Mike Tyson on these. People. He's like the ice climbers. He comes with the like the dog. He's <laughs> he's got two in one. You know, like in Smash <laughs> here's Bros. the other thing that's very important about Kid from Episode Eight. He watched, so he loves sashimi. He watched oh. the fishmonger cut the head off the fish that he oh. turned into sashimi, oh. and he averted his eyes. But you know what he did later that night? He ate the sashimi. Right, he understands the level of that bad better than other toddlers. 
Uh, so I, I see your point. For that reason, I think that he has some bloodthirsty instincts. I wouldn't go past Melon Girl either. Do we all remember Melon Girl? Melon girl. Oh, melon girl. There was girl. a girl that needed to grab a melon. I forgot oh, it was which a cabbage. episode it was. No, that was a cabbage. Well, cabbage. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, cabbage girl. She suddenly grafts it. Oh, yeah. And she she'll ripped just keep... a cabbage she... out of the ground. Yeah, with her bare three-year-old hands. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think that's the right answer. Like, I think objectively she wins. Oh, she yeah. She would choke hold all of the Popping TKO people Why are, Hold on. Can I raise a question? Why are we talking about yeah. this? Uh, well, my segue was that I'm a competitive American and I want to... Talk about yeah. violence. <laughs> okay, um, like, I'm, I'm gonna not. bring it back around and not talk <laughs> about <laughs> violence. New, let me pose a better competition question. Yeah. Who is the most capable? Who would win in a hug off? Okay. Yeah, yeah, who would win in a competition for being sweet little guys and gals? Um, no, who is like, what do you think is, who is the most capable of all the kids that you saw so far? Ooh, this is a good question. The most Ooh. get her done, can do attitude. It's got to be Cabbage Girl. So professional. I so professional and so dedicated to the craft. So dedicated, yeah. yeah. She developed technique. I think for me, if we're going duty, um, the girl from episode duty. five and the guy-girl pair, the girl from episode five yes. was on a mission. And she was this no nonsense. She was not swayed by her boyfriend's, you know, skullduggery. She <laughs> remained constant on the path. No horseplay. <laughs> Uh, oh, and James, I, happy 70th birthday. You've just used the word skullduggery. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, I, I mean, I, so I, I respect her drive there. I also think the girl who wanted to go back to the watch shop is, is severe, one of the heroes of this show. True. Um, I, I think one think, of the heroes of the world, actually, of this era. I, let her be like president, I think. Um, Honestly, yeah. Because yeah. here's the thing. Everybody's heroes are problematic. Right, not if her. You like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I got some things to tell you. But if yeah, you yeah. like that girl as a hero, she's a hero. She's got nothing bad against you her. Win. You won. Yeah, you did. You won. Yeah, I just I think my new goal is to get on the camera crew for this show, um, or to start Old Enough USA. <laughs> it's gonna yep. it's gonna happen. Well, I just man, it'd be hard also because like the way U.S. neighborhoods are set up is like. Like, if we wanted to do old enough in our hometown, it's like, okay, go walk, you know, a mile and a half to to anywhere where a store is, right? And it's like, yeah. it's like a store in a massive parking lot off of, like, a huge five-lane, like, main street. That's terrible. Like... Yeah, for a child? Right. The kid would t die, like, crossing the road. It's, it's yeah, it, it's terrible. Um, You'd have to find, like, sufficiently small, compact, walkable cities, which, in the modern USA... <laughs> make cities walkable as a, as a resident of san diego movement. as a resident of san diego i can firmly complain about how terrible going anywhere is here um, hey awful la right here i think we have it worse i definitely <laughs> you have it worse, we but, have it worse but but in the opposite direction right here like it's it's more pleasant sure but again everything is like three miles away and the only street, like the only streets here, are like massive six-lane highways. It's and it's terrible. Um, at least terrible. things are like more compact, if if very much more dangerous. I will get shot if I walk alone. Yeah, at night, James, I gotta well, be careful. <laughs> that is that is that is true. Um, <laughs> just tell him you run a podcast. You know, I actually You're wouldn't like, I run a podcast. if I had a cabbage girl with me. Oh, I would yeah. get stuck up, and that cabbage girl would like TKO the guy that I'm looking at. Would you grab his gun. Just, yeah. If you yes. had a camera crew with you, they 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 leave you. Rube. Actually, no, actually they they'd true. probably start asking the camera crew if they can like PA on set and get like get a good word put in for their boss. <laughs> you know, like, actually, I'm an actor. I even have my um. <laughs> that's probably what yeah. Can happen. you fill up my SAG card? I need my SAG card. Yeah, I'm up. trying to trying to get you know my my hundred days to join the union. You know. Um, yeah, can I can I go on the IMDb, please? <laughs> get, what, are we being credited? Is this union? Um, right. <laughs> but uh, listen, the moral of the story is: do yourself a favor and watch old enough. L what, like whatever you're doing right now, I promise you're not having as much fun as you would be having if you were watching old enough. Um, true. True. Right. Severely. And and hey, you know, I, I know you're thinking this is a short episode of Socratic Cinema. Like I miss my my James Charlie Casey content, and I'm feeling starved. Well. Let me tell you, one, 
what more can you say about kids being cute, right? But two, it's because there's big things. It's because we're gearing up for the big Bonanza birthday, Socratic birthday bash. Yahoo! Coming soon. I don't know if there's going to be another episode after the old enough before the anniversary or not. We have to decide. But the anniversary is coming in like two weeks. It's coming soon. It's coming for you. That's a threat. So remember to send us some questions so we can answer our Q&A portion of the episode uh, at the Google form in our social media, or you can just shoot us a question on Twitter unprompted and, and we'll take it. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at cinema Socratic and Instagram at Socratic underscore cinema. Uh, so be there, be square for the anniversary episode. Going to be lots of laughs, lots of tears, lots of looking back at the good times of this year. It's, it's going to be our, our season five finale. We've been doing season five for like, like seven months now. So it's, it's about time. Um, but thank you, as always, for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you share it with some friends. And and seriously, like seriously, watch Old Enough. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want, if you want to support the show monetarily and become part of the Socratic Army, you can do so uh, by becoming a patron at Patreon.com/slash Socratic Cinema for as little as one dollar a month. Um, any contributions are greatly appreciated, and we cannot thank all of our patrons enough, as always. Um, but with that all out of the way, I think we're going to say adieu until next time. Whether that be the anniversary or not, we'll see you around. So uh, bye-bye. Adios. Adios. Adios.